good evening and welcome to this service of evening prayer from All Saints Carshalton. For these services we use the Church of England's daily prayer app. Daily prayer app. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That's this evening. We may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 50. The Lord, the most mighty God, has spoken, and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting, out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. Consuming fire goes out before him, and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above, and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house nor he goes out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the castle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that fills it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls? or drink the blood of goats. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and fulfil your vows to God most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall share, and you, and you shall honour me. But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite to my statutes, and take my covenant upon your lips? since you refuse to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you made friends with him and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have done and should I keep silence? Did you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well, lest I tear you apart and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me. And to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. is taken from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 3. Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had designated, on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. He began to build on the second day of the second month of the fourth year of his reign. These are Solomon's measurements for building the house of God. The length in cubits of the old standard was 60 cubits, and the width 70 cubits. The vestibule in front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits long, across the width of the house, and its height was 120 cubits. He overlaid it on the inside with pure gold. The nave he lined with cypress, covered it with fine gold, and made palms and chains on it. He adorned the house with settings of precious stones. The gold was gold from Parvain. So he lined the house with gold, its beams, its thresholds, its walls, and its doors, and he carved cherubim on the walls. He made the most holy place. Its length, corresponding to the width of the house, was twenty cubits and its width was twenty cubits. He overlaid it with six hundred talents of, of fine gold. The weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold. He overlaid the upper chambers with gold. In the most holy place he made two carved cherubim, and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim, together, extended twenty cubits, one wing of one, five cubits long, touched the wall of the house, and its other wing, five cubits long, touched the wing of the other cherub, and of this cherub one wing, five cubits long, touched the wall of the house, and the other wing, also five cubits long, was joined to the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubim extended twenty cubits. The cherubim stood on their feet, facing the nave. And Solomon made the curtain of blue and purple and crimson fabrics and fine linen, and worked cherubim into it. In front of the house he made two pillars of thirty-five cubits high, with a capsule of five cubits on the top of each. He made encircling chains, and put them on the tops of the pillars. And he made one hundred pomegranates, and put them on the chains. He set up the pillars in front of the temple, one on the right, the other on the left. The one on the right he called Jackin, and the one on the left, Boaz. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. The 
second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to, to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. Let us pray. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from 
pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart, and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, Good Lord, deliver us. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death, and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry and word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection and your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten Christopher, our bishop, and all who minister, with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. And drew the High Court of Parliament, and all the ministers of the Crown, with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who administer the law, that they may uphold justice, honesty and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory, and for the good of all creation. <coughs> Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, good Lord. Bring your joy into all families. Strengthen and deliver those in childbirth. Watch over children and guide the young. Bring reconciliation to those in discord and peace to those in stress. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind, and provide for the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Lord, have mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Especially we remember June Beckmans and Susan Brickle. Lord have mercy. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, 
holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace so to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that, among the many changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.